The best was when we were able to uh, break into an enterprise network uh, externally, so the original one, and yeah, so we actually got into the network that way. Hello, Alexi. How are you doing? Fine, thanks. Uh, thanks for having me on. Before starting, I just want to let you know that it's a honor for me to have you on my YouTube channel. Your videos are, have been very helpful for my community and even me. So thanks for your contribution to the cybersecurity community. I remember a few months ago before passing the Pro Lab. Uh, Hack the Box Pro Lab Offshore that you know for sure. I watched your video on AD enumeration and uh, Bloodhound and it helped me a lot. So thanks for that and thanks for all your work. Uh, you're very welcome. Uh, thank you very much for the feedback and support. Uh, you know, that's really why I set up the channel was, you know, to provide resources like that. So yeah, really appreciate it. Can you start by introducing yourself to the community um yeah so as you know uh my name is alexis i uh i started hackersploit back in 2016 um i'm a penetration tester and red teamer by trade so uh i currently you know have my own penetration testing company and essentially you know perform penetration tests and red team uh, operations i'm also a red team instructor at INE. Um, so we essentially work on creating, uh, you know, red team content or offensive security content and, uh, you know, certifications. So to me or, you know, as to what I do. Do you have any hobby? Uh, my hobbies uh, usually revolve around uh, music. So uh, I'm I'm really into music production now. Uh, I have been for a couple of uh, a couple of months. Uh, but uh, yeah, it typically revolves around music and sports uh, or reading. But yeah. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Okay, so first question, I receive a question, let's say every week, every day, I'm sure that you receive the same question again and again. What do you answer when someone asks you how to start learning ethical hacking? Um, well, uh, I would say that it depends on their prior experience. So do they have experience with technology? If they do, then I would recommend that they get started by, uh, you know, learning networking. So, you know, TCP IP, uh, the OSI model, uh, stuff like that, uh, just so they, they have an understanding of, of uh, you know, how the OSI model works and the various protocols, uh, you know, and how they work. So, you know, things like HTTP, uh, you know, DNS, uh, all, all of the protocols. Um, and then I would say learn a little bit about how operating systems work. So, you know, how Linux works, how to use Linux, uh, how to secure Linux. Uh, and then, of course, do the same thing for Windows, whereby, you know, learn how Windows works, learn about the Windows registry, learn where, you know, Windows stores its passwords, uh, the different hashing algorithms uh, that it uses for passwords. Uh, and, you know, just get an understanding of how these operating systems work, because when you get into ethical hacking, you're going to be testing these systems or hacking them. So in order for you to do that well, you need to understand how they work. Um, I would then recommend learning a scripting language like Bash or Python, just so that you can automate things. And, uh, you know, that'll give you a bit of an idea as to how to read other people's scripts and you know how to develop your own so that's the advice that i would give to anyone who has uh, a background in technology before getting started uh, for someone who is completely new to technology of course i would recommend going for you know for specific certifications like the comtia a plus uh, network plus stuff like that just so that they can get an introduction to technology and you know networking and uh, i mm -hmm. think after uh, you know after that point they can then start uh, you know learning about uh, you know operating systems scripting and then they can actually get into ethical hacking or penetration testing that's a good point yeah what do you recommend uh, has a, scr a scripting language between bash and uh, python um, again, yeah, I think right now most exploits are, you know, or uh, a huge collection of exploits are developed in Python. So it's much better because you have access to things like modules and you can make scripts better. You can extend the functionality. I think on the side of Bash, it's more, more, more so with automation. So, you know, automating, uh, you know, specific uh, commands or specific tasks on Linux. So I think it depends on, on ultimately on, on what you're trying to do. Are you trying to develop uh, you know, new tools that require modules or that are going to, you know, interact with the web or maybe fetch a web page and, and do multiple things like that. So uh, based on your requirements, I would say, uh, you know, start off with Bash so that you get uh, an introduction to programming uh, at a very basic level. You know, you learn about variables and stuff like that. 
And then you can move on to Python where you can start developing your own scripts, reading other people's scripts and learning how to do things. And then, you know, uh, just pick a project. Uh, let's say you wanted to automate or create an Nmap uh, scanner or something like that. Uh, you know, just create a script like that and then output the, uh, or take the output from the Nmap scan and maybe, you know, put it in JSON format and, you know, uh, create a report. So just basic yeah, stuff just like around. that. Just yeah. Around. And 2016, you said in your uh, video, How I Learned Ethical Hacking, that you advise people to start by using uh, Linux. So uh, which Linux distribution do you recommend for a beginner? Um, well, I think at this point, I would still recommend Kali. Um, if you're getting into pen testing, if you're, if you're not really into cybersecurity per se, I would say either Ubuntu or, uh, Lin uh, you know, Linux Mint, uh, primarily because they're based on Debian. Uh, Debian has the most amount of documentation. Uh, plus, uh, at least in the case of uh, Ubuntu, it's not a rolling release distribution which means that uh, things will not break. Uh, so, you know, I would not recommend a beginner to actually use something like Arch Linux, which is rolling release, and they're likely to experience issues. So I would say it's not really about the distribution you choose to use. It's just about uh, making things as easy as possible when you get started. After that, you can then start, you know, exploring the other uh, distribution. So I typically recommend starting off with a Debian-based distribution like Ubuntu and and uh, and and or Debian, and uh, you can try Linux Mint. But you know, nowadays there's a ton of other distributions out there. Uh, the only reason why I like Ubuntu is because Ubuntu has always been consistent, right? Uh, since ever since I started using it in in it's 2008. From South Africa, or so I think. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's from South Africa, so uh, <laughs> okay. it's it's I I really like Ubuntu, and and it's not just about that. It's because it's always worked for me. I've never had any issues with it, and I've installed it on multiple systems, and uh, yeah, so that's what I typically recommend. Which uh, certification do you advise for red uh, to start red teaming, blue teaming, or purple teaming, and why? Um, I think I can only speak on the red team side of things because that's where I have most experience. On the blue team side, I know there's there, there, there are quite a few certifications, but uh, I think on the red team, I would say uh, the certifications you should go for. Uh, to start off, I really like Hack the Box uh, Dante Labs. Uh, I think that's a very good one. That'll give you a proper introduction to what a real environment looks like. Um, I would say then the OSCP, obviously. And, uh, you know, uh, the reason I say OSCP is it's not really a red teaming uh, certification, but um, it'll give you, you know, proper a proper introduction to penetration testing and uh, and red teaming and, you know, the, the various tools uh, you'll need to use during the process. Um, I think then uh, at that point, you typically need to, you know, um, once you're a red teamer, there's really specialized certifications. Like uh, one that I really like was the Pentester Academy's uh, CRTE certification or CRTP. So I think there are two of them. So there's a certified uh, red team professional and certified uh, red team expert. So that will really focus on active directory pen testing, which is very important when you become a red teamer. So those are the ones I recommend for the red team. Uh, for the blue team, as I said, um, I don't really have much experience now, although I, I was involved in blue teaming uh, a, a few years ago, so I'm not really aware of the certifications there, and I'm not sure you know where they stand today, but I think on the blue team side, it's more to do with getting certifications for uh, individual tools. So, you know, um, in, on the blue team side, you'll typically have uh, multiple tools that you're going to be using, whether you're working as a SOC analyst or incident responder, so, you know, just uh, learning and getting certified with all those tools is important. Um, for the blue team, uh, oh, sorry, for the purple team at this point, uh, that's still a very new field. So there's no real dedicated certifications for that. But I think having um, a mixture of uh, experience in blue teaming and red teaming is is obviously going to be important. So, yeah. About, uh, about OSCP. Uh, the, what do you think about uh, the recent changes? Uh, I mean, the price, uh, the certification support now from paper to digital. What do you, what do you think about that? 
Um, I, I think it's, uh, I, I, I'm not really in support of the new, I, I, I like the new content. I think that's, mm -hmm. that's good. The new labs are good, which With is the why AD. they probably, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I really like that. I think that was very important for them to do. So that's good. Uh, for the pricing, I, you know, it really doesn't make sense to me because, you know, for what they're teaching you and for the labs they're providing you, you can get the same experience on like Hack the Box. Like if you remove the video side of things, the labs are, are pretty much the same thing, right? So I think what people are paying for now is really the, the actual certification and the OSCP has now become very valuable, which is why they can price it like that. But again, I think for certifications like the OSCP and SANS certifications, they they obviously now they they obviously going to be on on the higher side uh, because they are more valued and uh, you know what once so for example if like OSCP or offensive security gets into a partnership with a government right where they're training uh, you know government officials or uh, individuals involved within the government then they can increase the price significantly so um, I think. Um, I'm not, I really don't like the, the new pricing model, but the content and the labs are good. They've always been good. As for the fact that they've moved to a, a digital uh, certification, I think that's fine. As long as you get a certificate ID that can be verified. Uh, although having the actual paper certification is really cool because it's something that you can hold. But I think they also had to do that because of COVID and the fact that, you know, sending things across the world had become extremely difficult and also quite expensive. Uh, but I think what they've done is they've just made the operations better in terms of logistics. And uh, I think they just saw that it would be better if they, you know, send digital certificates. Uh, as long as you can verify them, I think that's perfectly fine. Yeah, but uh, at least I think they could add a, uh, an option to pay for the certificate in order to receive the paper. Has Econcil is doing now with uh, CH? You are absolutely right. I think they should have an option at least to provide you with like a printable format that you know you can sort of print yourself. Although I don't know whether people would like that, but I think that's a very good point you mentioned because all the previous OSCP holders will have theirs in a printed format and then mm -hmm. the new ones will not have that. So, uh, yeah, I think they should provide the option where you pr probably pay like maybe 20 or $30 and you can then get it yes, sent to you. From your point of view, oh, what is the importance of low level programming language in Red Team Ops? Um, so I'm guessing you're talking about, uh, are you talking about C. assembly or C or? C, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so I think that's useful if you're becoming an exploit developer. I think knowing basic C is important because some exploits for Windows are, are written in C. So, you know, C, C++, C Sharp, just knowing how to read and understand what's going on with an exploit is very important. But that only becomes useful when you get into reverse engineering and exploit development where you're making your own exploits, uh, mm -hmm. specifically for Windows and Linux. So. Again, it depends on what you want your skill set to be, because in a team of penetration testers or red teamers, there's always going to be a guy who is good with Active Directory, a guy who's good with Linux, uh, and then there's a guy who knows how to develop exploits or modify them. So if that's something that interests you, if you like developing exploits, testing them out, then I would say, you know, learn C, uh, C, C++ and C Sharp, because those are the, the most important ones right now. And, uh, you know, if you're going into reverse engineering, which is which is quite complicated, then you'll need to know assembly and, uh, you know, but I think at that point, you'll actually just become a reverse engineering uh, expert mm. as opposed to a red teamer, uh, because in red team operations, there's very little of reverse engineering. Last question. Can you tell us about your best and worst experience in technology In technology or red team mission? Um, yeah, so I think before I worked, I think I'll start off with my worst. Uh, before I started as in, in penetration testing or in cybersecurity, I worked as a Linux system administrator for a large organization. So um, I remember there was once uh, where, where I was actually working with another, another sysadmin on developing a script to automate you know, to essentially dump the database uh, and then, of course, uh, make backups of uh, specific directories and stuff like that. And uh, we ended up uh, messing up the database. Uh, I'll, I'll not get too into that because uh, it was a really, really difficult day. 
but we yeah we, we ended up messing the database which brought down a few oh, uh, okay. internal applications that were using that that database mm -hmm. and uh, so we essentially brought down the entire like accounting department for i think two days uh, but luckily for us we actually had taken or we we had we had actually okay. started taking off-site backups uh, just in <laughs> case this would happen so i think that's the worst because you know at that point when it happens you you just become a little bit confused uh, you don't know where to start what to do whether you can recover it whether you need to restore a backup so and i think have, that's the you, worst you don't have anyone to help you you are just alone with your colleague yeah yeah and uh, you know you're you're pretty much just alone with your with your computer so and, and and then you know after a few minutes you start hearing people saying something's not working or they're not able to <laughs> yeah. log in so i know that i know that since i was working in uh, incident management so i know <laughs> what it is yeah and what's the best experience um the best i think there there've been quite a few of those especially uh as a red team uh, i think the best was when we were able to uh break into an enterprise network uh externally so uh, they had um, they had a guest Wi-Fi network, um, which was uh, WPA2 Enterprise, and uh, we'd essentially set up a uh, uh, we we had we had of course tried the, the the actual passwords and you know and and password and and trying to receive a salt, uh, but you know that didn't work. So we actually set up an, an evil twin. So we essentially cloned the same network, and uh, we actually. Uh, got someone to to actually provide their their Wi-Fi password. We did this in the morning, uh, so that uh, you know when when uh, when when it, when employees started coming in, uh, we had deauthed the other network, and uh, so they they had to connect to the new network because it had a new uh, it had a new uh, MAC address. So when they connected, they then provided the password, and then we just stopped deauthing the the original one. And yeah. So we actually got into the network that way. And then at that point, there wasn't any, uh, because that was still DMZ, uh, if you will, mm -hmm. there wasn't really any defenses there. So, you know, we had at that point, at least we had some form of access in the network. And then we were able to to make our way in, uh, you know, by pivoting because there was an um, the actual receptions computer for some reason was on that network. I'm not really sure why it was actually connected to that uh, guest network. Uh, and that means that it was exposed. So. Uh, that's how we were able to gain access. And then after a bit of uh, reconnaissance on that system, uh, we were able to find uh, a few connections made by, by the domain admin into that system remotely. And uh, yeah, so we essentially just used that and uh, started making our way inside the network. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Check the description, you will find Alex's YouTube channel. If you want to learn more about penetration testing, subscribe to his channel. He has a lot of very helpful videos. Take care of you. Ciao.